Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm filming a three healthy vegan snacks, savory style. Wow, that was a lot. Savory style for you guys today. Um, I was gonna film what I ate in a day, but then I was like, why not film these snacks? Because I made them the other day and when I posted them on my story, you guys did actually ask for me to film them for a YouTube video, so. I figured I'd do that today instead. Honestly, so delicious, really easy, very minimal ingredients, fairly healthy, um, and yeah, literally like any of you guys can do them and all taste freaking amazing. I honestly had like the most insane response when I posted the stories of them the other day and all I was like posting was a photo of potatoes and then like cauliflower in reality, but I literally don't think I've had that many like requests for a recipe before, so that was amazing. So I currently, there you go, just finished being heated up. So I have the oven preheating on 180 degrees and then I also have some water boiling behind me in a big saucepan, is that what it's called? I don't really know. While the water is boiling, I'm just going to cut up some spud light potatoes. I'm just gonna use whatever's left. So I have four of these here. Actually, before I do that, I do just need to peel them really quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. I honestly hate peeling stuff. I find it so time consuming. Once our potatoes are all peeled, just going to cut them up into your preferred sizes. I like them nice and small because then they're extra crispy where you want them to be, but you can make them bigger, smaller, it's totally up to you. I do prefer them to look a little bit more rustic as well. So no like preference in how I cut them up. Just kind of cut them however. Now that the water's boiling, I'm just going to add in some salt. And then also half a teaspoon of baking powder. Don't ask me why you add this in. I just saw it in a YouTube video and it says that that's what really helps to get them in nice and crispy. And then just go ahead and add in your potatoes. Apparently you want to add your potatoes in when the water's already boiling as well for some reason. Again, don't ask me why, but that's what it said. Wow, this water's going absolutely everywhere. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but let's just carry on. While the potatoes are boiling, we're just gonna go ahead and make like the buttery sort of coating that's gonna be coating the potatoes. You can do this a few different ways. Um, the Some of the recipes I was watching said to make like an infused oil, but I'm honestly just going to use Nuttalex because I don't have any oil at the moment. So it's like around two tablespoons, I would say. Perfect for the amount of potatoes that I've just got boiling. And then you can use fresh garlic, but I just have minced garlic handy. So I'm just gonna add um, like two tablespoon teaspoons of that. Honestly, I'm just like I just add whatever you know You can kind of do whatever you want depending on your personal preference And then I'm also just gonna add in some fresh rosemary I made this with thyme the other day and it was delicious But I'm gonna try rosemary today just to see how that goes And then once the garlic has kind of cooked through you can turn that off and then we'll just wait for the potatoes to be done. Once your potatoes are boiled enough that they will be sliced through really easily with a knife, it means that they are ready. And we're just gonna drain them in the sink. And then the trick to getting them extra crispy is you actually just wanna like shake them around while they're nice and hot so they kind of break apart. Can you guys see that? Um, and then that's what helps actually crisp them up. So you want them to be cooked enough that they will do that around the edges. And then we're just going to add them into a bowl and then also add our butter mixture on top. And then you're just going to give them a stir around so that they're all nicely coated with that buttery goodness. And then once they're all nice and coated, just going to put them on a piece of baking paper on a baking tray and then you actually want to make sure that they're all really nicely spread out and not touching so that they can just crisp up on their own. Basically you're going to place them in the oven for 20 minutes without moving them then once the 20 minute mark hits that's when you can start rotating them around a little bit and then just keep cooking them until your desired crispiness. My potatoes are looking so delicious. These are our crispy potatoes all done fresh out of the oven. How incredible do they look? They're literally so crispy. See how because you ruffle them up, it just really creates that really amazing texture for the crispiness. And the same with the bicarb soda or the um, baking soda or whatever. It honestly just is the biggest game changer. It's so incredible. Alrighty, now it's time for our cauliflower bite. So we're going to start off by making the batter. So all you need for the batter is half a cup of whichever flour you would like. I'm just using wholemeal flour. 
and then a half a cup of whichever milk you would like i'm just using unsweetened almond milk and then you're just going to add in whichever seasonings you would like you can follow a recipe if you want to but i just kind of add in whatever um so i'm just adding in some cayenne pepper also adding in some salt i like lots of salt so i'm going to go in on that and then some cracked pepper you can also use like um paprika and stuff if you would like some shaker fry seasoning and then also some chili flakes just a couple because we are going to add on some um hot sauce later and then also just some minced garlic i'm just going to add in like one and a bit of that and then we're just going to whisk that all together just to combine know. it and i do actually find that that's a little bit too thick so i'm just going to add a little bit more um of the unsweetened almond milk Now that that's all mixed together, we're just going to add in our cauliflower. So this has been cut up already. And then you're just going to coat the cauliflower in that batter. And you don't need it to be like completely coated, just like lightly is fine. Ideally, it's best to have them all spread out, but you can kind of have them all clumped together. So we're just gonna roll with that for today because I don't have another tray for my air fryer and we need to be time efficient. Oh, by the way, it's actually best to not have the, um, leftover batter chilling like that so i'm probably gonna try and scoop that out right now actually because it just goes like yucky and hard because all it is is like flour and milk and then i'm just gonna place these in the air fryer for roughly 15 to 20 minutes and then i'm also gonna um put the buffalo sauce on top um yeah at around the halfway mark for the buffalo sauce it's gonna add in like again you could probably find measurements somewhere but i just kind of guesstimate it going to do like two tablespoons of coconut oil the other recipes said normal oil but I actually find the coconut oil gives it a really nice flavor and then sriracha and then also just some of this sugar-free maple syrup the other recipes said to use it's like honey but I didn't have any honey and I feel like sugar-free maple syrup is a good idea because it's obviously less cows and then just mix that all together you can add more or less of each one depending on what you prefer. Cauliflower bites are at the halfway mark, so I'm just gonna coat all of them with this buffalo sauce. And honestly, this is like a game changer. It makes them taste so delicious. And I actually love the taste of like the um, sugar-free maple syrup with this and the coconut oil. I just feel like it's so yummy. Our cauliflower bites are all done. They look so insane. Honestly, that buffalo sauce is so delicious. It's the biggest game changer. I can't believe I've never had it before, but I'm honestly gonna put it on everything. It's so good. Lastly, we have our tofu nuggets. I've actually never made these before, so hopefully they turn out amazingly. Basically, we just have a massive block of firm tofu, and apparently you just like break it off into like chunky pieces. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I feel like that's what makes it look nice and like nuggety. And then I'm just gonna make them a little bit smaller because like I like tofu, but I don't like massive chunks of it and I'd rather have like little small ones. Now that the tofu is all done and in our little correct portion sizes, I'm gonna go ahead and make the batter. So for the batter, it just requires one part flour, one part water. So I've just used like half of each of these glasses and then I'm just going to mix that together and then this is going to be like our egg i suppose um you know how when you like crumb a schnitzel or something you have like the egg and then the breadcrumbs so this is our egg all right i'm not going to show you all of them but i'm just going to show you like the first one so we're just going to coat it in our stage one of butter and then crumb her up i'm just using this um like gluten-free crumb you could probably use a better one but we're just going to make do and then carry on. These are the tofu nuggets all done. So I'm just gonna put them in the oven for 20 minutes and then I'll rotate them at the halfway point and then put them in for another 20 minutes. You could also use the air fryer as well, but mine's already been used. These are the tofu nuggets all done. They look absolutely incredible and they taste delicious as well. I will crack one open for you. Looks so good. Really hard with one hand, but inside so yum mm, actually so good and these also taste amazing with that buffalo sauce as well like dunked into it or also our little dressing over here i'm going to be having the same sauce with all three just because it's really nice and easy so i'm just going to be using coconut yogurt i'm going to make up a nice big batch just so it goes a long way um so probably like 
like three tablespoons, maybe a little bit more. And then I'm also just gonna add in some garlic. Obviously, coconut yogurt is super strong, so we need to make it more savory. And then we can add in some salt, quite a bit, and then also some pepper, again, quite a bit. And then you can always add more or less, depending on what you wanna do. I'm so also gonna add in some lemon juice. You can use fresh lemon if you would like, but this is just so much more convenient. And then I also have some dill here as well that I've just finally chopped up. And then I'm just gonna mix all of that together. And then this is gonna make like a really nice and like fresh sauce to go with mostly the buffalo wings because they are like on the spicier side. It's really nice having like a sauce that's like yogurty to really balance it out. This is our little uh, feast all done. So we have, of course, our crispy potatoes. They look absolutely incredible. So that was with the rosemary. The thyme is amazing with it as well. And then we also have our cauliflower buffalo, little wing bite things, and then also our tofu nuggets that are really nice and crispy and delicious. And then also a really nice little refreshing sauce over here as well. Absolutely delicious. If you guys do give any of these a try, make sure you let me know in the comments below. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you do give it a big thumbs up if you wanna see more videos like this. And also make sure you guys are subscribed. I always forget to mention that. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.